Hey YouTube, how's it going? Hey guys, um, how you been? Uh, it's been a while. It's been a week. <laughs> last, my last video. So, um, today we're gonna learn about range input, and last time we learned about number input. Alright, um, let's get started. Um, HTML forms, range input. Using an input type equals uh, quotes number quotes uh, uh, is great if we want to allow users to type in any number of their choosing. But if we wanted to limit what numbers our users could type, we might consider using a different type value. Another option we could use is setting type to range, which creates a slider. To set the minimum and maximum values of the slider, we assign values to the min and max attribute of the input. We could also control how smooth and fluid the slider works by assigning the step attribute a value. Smaller step values will make the slider more fluidly, whereas larger steps values will make the slider move more noticeably. Noticeable. Take a look at the code to create a slider. All right, this is the code right here. So this is a form form element, label for equals volume, and then we're calling it volume control and ending with the label. Input ID equals quotes, volume, quotes, name equals quotes, volume, quotes, type equals range. So quotes range minimum equals quote zero quotes max equals quote 100 quote step equals quote one equals uh, then uh, uh, less than sign, greater than less than sign and then form the code above renders this so this code right here creates a volume control. All right, in the example above, every time the slider moves by one, the value of the input value attribute changes. This practice has two new elements and an attribute that you may not be familiar with. So this is the section element. So an element used to represent a standalone section for which a more specific element can't be found. This usually has a heading as a child element a section should make sense in the outline of a document, whereas div is used for styling. This is a semantic element you'll learn more about in a later lesson. Class, a global attribute that has a list of classes pertaining to an element. You'll see this used with section in the practice. HR, an element that is used to break between paragraph level elements it is displayed as a horizontal line. This is a this is also a semantic element that you'll learn more about later lessons. So these are the instructions right here. So one, it says, let's give our users an option for how they want to cook their patties. We can do this by adding a slider to the existing form. Okay. So in this section, in the section with class equals cooked, add an input element, set the ID and name to doneness. Also set the type, also set the type attribute to range. Since our form is getting long, you might have to scroll down to find the provided section. All right, so let's go here. This is where we add our code. So right here it says section class cooked, label for doneness, how do we want our patty cooked? And label and we break the line and we span rare span okay so let's go ahead and um first we need to make an input okay so how do we do that use the sign input less than greater than sign id equals and then we got to put doneness done uh how do you spell that d-o-n-e 
N E S S. And then we put a name. We got to name it. Done this again. So first of all, we had the ID. We're making an ID, and then we're calling it. We're naming it Done Nest. All right. And then this is the section we're putting it in right here. Class cooked. And then we have the input and the ID right here. The name Done Nest. And also, we need to set the attribute. That's what's next. So it's good to um, go step by steps. So you could easily understand everything. Type equals range. OK. So we did that range. And then since our form is getting long, you might want to scroll down to find a provider section. So let's go ahead and um, close this right now and test it out. All right, sweet. So we um we able to okay. This popped up. This is the slider. So we go rare left, left and right, and then we could type stuff in. How many patties would you like? One hundred. Um, and then what type of protein would you like? Beans, chicken. <laughs> Um, and then next we got, um, do, so that's done. That first part is done. The second part is for newly created input, set the min attribute to zero, max attribute to five, step attribute to 0 0.5. Okay. Now we got to put the numbers in. Let's go in here, open that up, space bar, type in min. So we got to make the uh, minimum real quick. Quotes, zero. Add the max. And how do we do the attribute? We got to do equal and then five. And then we go step, last one, step equals uh, quotes, 0 0.5. And then we close it off and let's try to run it. Sweet, we did it. Okay. So for a newly created out input, so we set it a minimum of zero and the maximum is five. So three, four, five. So we got it right here and the steps is 0 0.5. See, when we take this out, let's do this. Let's comment this out real quick or do a test. Comment this out. Put it here. On this. See how it slides here? It's sliding smoothly. And when we put this stuff back, we run it again, it starts skipping. Because it's going from... um. Their minimum range is zero and the max is five. So five all across. And it steps by 0 0.5. One, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So there we go. And then chicken, 100. So we could put that and then put one of beans. And so it just go, it just skips it. And now, okay, that's all, guys. Um, I hope you guys doing well out there and um, staying safe. So what we did this lesson, just to recap, we just did um, learn how to do a range input, make a slider, and added um, the ID and naming it doneness. And yeah, we could skip through it. All right, good job, everybody. Um, also, um, take care and be safe. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And see you next time. Bye.